Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Wench Bench, where friends sit and talk about fabulous fictional females and how their stories have influenced us throughout our lives. My name is Allison. And my name is Fonda. And today, Fonda is going to be talking about Aqua from Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. So going into it, I'm going to be ignoring, not ignoring. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not gonna talk about the complexity and <laughs> confusion that is the timeline and plot of Kingdom Hearts. That's fair. I'm going to give you like a basic world overview so you can kind of understand basic things that'll come up for what I want to talk about with Aqua. Yeah. But I'm going to ignore everything else. Yeah. Like minimal context so that I can at least understand somewhat what's going on, but I don't super need big picture. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I'm sure I can piece it together. You can, like, there's tons of people that you can find on the internet that have done a very good job of concisely talking about it. (laughs) I don't need to be another one. No. No. And we're here to talk about females, not... Yes. Fictional... Not worlds. Ladies. (laughs) Not worlds. (laughs) So, in the universe of Kingdom Hearts, it's also called the world, there are many worlds that fall into certain realms. All of these realms are on their own plane of existence. Think of it like fucking space. Like, literally, you're traveling on a gummy ship at one point to get to these other worlds. Nice. So... I always thought when I was playing it that I was legit just traveling through space to get to other planets. Yeah. Really, you're traveling through some sort of space uh, (laughs) between... (laughs) You're not traveling through space. You are traveling through some sort of space. (laughs) It's like, it's like, it looks like space because there's asteroids. Like, it's not space, but it is, in my opinion, very (laughs) space-like. So, and you're going to these different worlds that are its own, like, realm and things. And it, anyways, it gets, I'm moving on. Yeah, works for me. (laughs) Legend has it. That long ago, there was only one single world that was constantly bathed in the warmth of the light of what's called the Kingdom Hearts. In the age of fairy tales, the world was whole and full of light, which was believed to come from the Kingdom Hearts, which is just a giant fucking heart that looks like a, like a heart that has like the surface looking details of the moon. Oh, cool. And it's called the Kingdom Hearts because it has a bunch of, like, magical powers and properties and everybody wants it. The counterpart, um, which protected the Kingdom Hearts from anything that wanted to use it for evil, was called the Keyblade with an X. It's spelt with an X. I always thought it was called an X-Blade when I was playing it because I didn't know the X was pronounced Key. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So every time it came up as a kid, I'm like, X-Blade. I gotta get the X-Blade. What's this X-Blade? And then it wasn't until until the third game came out when someone said it in the game. I was like, (laughs) I've been saying it wrong. But over time, people came to desire the power of the Kingdom Hearts introducing darkness into the world so basically there was no darkness everything was like light and good and happy obviously sadness yeah was still there but the really negative emotions of people developed darkness lame and in order to take control of kingdom hearts many people forged keyblades in the image of the key blade the thing that i thought was an x blade <laughs> very confusing people made keyblades spelled k-e-y blades in the image of the keyblade x 
okay. symbol blade. X blade. See, it's, <laughs> I thought they were different things. Anyways, and they clashed together in a far-reaching conflict that embroiled the entire world. And this event became known as the Keyblade War. And in the end, darkness covered over the whole world. And the Keyblade, the like original blade, was shattered into 20 pieces. Ooh. Seven of the pieces were light and 13 of the pieces were darkness. Okay. And the quote unquote true kingdom hearts disappeared into the darkness because of this big war. Okay. Continuing on to kind of like explain why Aqua's important. If I was going to talk about other characters, I probably wouldn't be talking this much about a world overview, but it's important for her character. So please bear with me. No worries. It's all making However, sense so far. So thank God. Thank God. Tried really hard, Elsa. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a moon heart, and yep. there's an X blade, and yes. people made keyblades to look like the X blade, yes. and then they fought over things, and then yeah. the X blade blew up, and yes, the moon heart <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> You got it. There you go. <laughs> um, sadly, the not sadly. However, the world was um, restored by the light from the hearts of children. Oh. Many individual worlds separated from each other because at one point it was all just one world. But then they like, like, I think of a big bang. Again, yeah. very space like in my head. It just separated from that big fight. Okay. So kind of like if all of our planets were one and then they separated into a solar system. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. See (laughs) see why I think it's very (laughs) space-like? It it sounds very (laughs) space-like. It does. Uh, So the remnants of the battlefield on which the Keyblade War took place became the Keyblade Graveyard and a scarred wasteland filled with the Keyblades of fallen warriors. The remaining Keyblade wielders resolved to protect the world from further destruction, becoming guardians of the world order. Ooh. They're called masters, okay. which is important. Each world was recreated following the Keyblade War, and it has its own time flow. But as a result, their rebooting is left at like random places. So during this reboot... These creatures called Heartless, they're creatures that don't have a heart, run rampant. <laughs> really? And clearly. And they have to be slain by Keyblade wielders uh, to prepare the world for the inhabitants to return. Okay. Prior to the release of the Heartless, the worlds were surrounded by barriers to prevent outside interference like a giant force field, basically, making it impossible for different worlds to have contact. However, because of the Heartless, it caused the barriers between the worlds to crumble and disappear, which made some worlds become consumed by this, like, eldritch horde of Heartless. And those who traveled between the worlds are advised to avoid meddling in the affairs of other worlds, And informing their inhabitants of the existence of other worlds. Okay. So, in order to maintain a balance of separation, several characters in the story, most notably the one you play the most, named Sora, Donald, and then Goofy, um, they magic... I know, there's Disney (laughs) characters in this, be prepared. Yeah. (laughs) They magically alter their physical appearance in certain worlds to avoid standing out. So, like, in one world, they go to, like, Under the Sea, which is, like, Little Mermaid, (laughs) And <laughs> Do- Donald turns into a, a weird duck mermaid and Goofy turns into a weird turtle. So like they'll physically change their forms to match the world that they go in. It's not often because like they go into a Rapunzel world and Goofy and Donald are still Goofy and Donald. Okay. <laughs> they don't change to look like humanoids. Yeah. So sometimes it's weird how that like breaks that rule, but whatever. Whatever they want to be fun, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, to be fun. I think it's because they're like, they got the rights from Disney, so they're like, we can't just not make the Disney characters be, like, notable (laughs) throughout the whole thing, is how I viewed it. Yeah. (laughs) 
Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, there's like plenty of other people who are going to specifically talk about like the timeline, the chronological order of like the games, break down the convolutedness and how certain characters connect. Um, there's plenty of people on YouTube that do an incredible job explaining this. I, I'm not going to fucking do it. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about a character. I'm done with this. Um, but I will provide a link in the description for this episode for places that you can watch or get a f- better breakdown of like the world and the games and how they connect to form the correct timeline for this game series. Cool. So, just to make sure that I have it right in my dumb explanations. (laughs) All these worlds needed to be rebooted slash remade by these people who hold the Keyblades. Yes. And they were supposed to be contained in a force field to stop them from communicating prematurely. Yes. But a group of crazy shit called the Heartless... (laughs) Yes. Uh ended up breaking down a bunch of those barriers and fucking shit up. Yeah. Cool. Cool, you got <laughs> it. it. Nice job. <laughs> uh, so some This basic... is exactly how my teachers in school had to deal with me too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just in one ear and then it gets crushed and like turned into something that's just palatable and different. <laughs> but makes sense to you and has like the basics. Yeah, I got the basics. That's, that's what matters. That's what matters. Part. As long as you can follow along as yeah. I continue. I can pass the tests. <laughs> you can. You can. There will be one at the end of this episode. Please be prepared. Okay. <laughs> I'll start taking notes. <laughs> so here's some basic character information on Aqua. Aqua's first full game appearance was in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, a game that came out in 2010. But her first appearance was a cameo in Kingdom Hearts 2. Okay. Mm-hmm. Aqua is one of the main protagonists in the game Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and the main protagonist of Kingdom Hearts uh, 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage. We're going to ignore the confusing game titles for some things, okay? Yeah. Uh, she is one of the Keyblade wielders before Sora, who's the main character you meet in the very first game for Kingdom Hearts. Nice. Timeline fuckery. Timeline fuckery, yep. She's one of the first, not like the first Keyblader, but she is a Keyblader that came before the main character of the game. Uh, Like her sort of companions, Terra and Ventus. It's her dream to become a Keyblade master. Okay. And she's actually the only one out of the three to achieve the goal and earn the title of Keyblade master. Good for her. I know. Because it's actually, it's a complicated test to become a Keyblade Master. Because you have to be able to balance the darkness and the light that comes with being a Keyblade wielder. Okay. Aqua is described by Tetsuya Nomura as being tricky um, in the sense of like how she's viewed as a character in the sense of game mechanics. If you're just viewing her as a character that you're trying to beat or fight against, she's very tricky because she's a magic-based fighter with agility to boot. So she's capable of doing like cartwheels while attacking with her keyblade, um, but she's more than capable physically. Her prowess lies with a more magic-orientated fighting style, being well-versed in all forms. Mm -hmm. So when you play her or see her show up in the game she's i guess supposed to be difficult to like deal with or fight in combat because she has a lot more skill sets yeah that allow her to do like tricky maneuvers in the game which i didn't know that's how they they came about making her which i find very interesting because her personality is not like a trickster okay so i find it interesting that her like play style is Yeah, like almost more like versatile than tricky, Mm -hmm. it sounds like. Uh, Aqua is second only to Master Xehanort, who's an evil man, in terms of magic amongst Keyblade users. Sounds like an evil man. He is evil. 
she displays superior skills to both Terra and Ventus, as well as later Keyblade users such as Sora and Riku. She has her own special variations of the fire, ice, and thunder spells that are used in the game. And she can cast Reflect, which is a spell that can like bounce back an enemy's attack of some kind. Okay. And she can do it indefinitely without tiring out. While some other characters, you can only do it so often before your character like looks exhausted in the game. Yeah. She is slower than some other characters, such as her her teammate Ventus, but she is uh, faster than others. So she's in like that weird middle, I would guess. Yeah, kind of average. Yeah. Speed. Yeah. Uh, like most of the series in the Kingdom Hearts franchise, they enjoy trios. So Aqua is the trio of the protagonists, Terra and Ventus, for some of the games. They really enjoy having, like, two boys and a girl. (laughs) Classic. That's, like, like their classic trio. Except for Sora, Donald, and Goofy. They're their own trio, but... Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, I guess, like, what I really like about Aqua, to start with, is the series, Kingdom Hearts itself, has multiple female characters in the game. Some you get to see more of, some are just like side characters you meet in different worlds that are established in other games. Like you meet Rapunzel. I don't really need to talk about Rapunzel. She has her whole new movie, right? It's not yeah. like, it's a cool like, oh, a Disney character or oh, this other like Final Fantasy character shows up. But if I'm just looking at characters that Kingdom Hearts made themselves, they do have multiple female characters. Nice. But they definitely are more mass male presenting heavy characters in the game. Yeah, from what I've yeah. seen, mm-hmm. at um, least of the popular characters. Seems yeah, to be the way. Sadly, it's it's rare to play these female characters. Aqua was the first playable female protagonist in the series. Oh. Um, sadly, I never got to play the game that she was introduced in as it was for PlayStation Portable, a console that I didn't oh. have. Uh, <laughs> Not many people did. that I know of had that. <laughs> yeah, it was rare. <laughs> uh, regardless, I was able to still enjoy her as a character later on when people started to post like walkthroughs of video games more online where you could see people playing the games, mm-hmm. which is really nice because Kingdom Hearts, as much as I love it, They've made so many games for so many different consoles. <laughs> it's so confusing. Just yeah. a quick tangent. Like the first game came out on PlayStation. Okay. Second game came out on PlayStation 2. Kingdom Hearts 3 didn't come out for years. But there were games for freaking PlayStation Portable. There was one for like uh, a, a weird GameCube, a weird DS one. Oh, like they came out. They I don't came, GameCube. Yeah, I believe it was GameCube or Game something. Never for Xbox, but they came out with tons of like different games. And it's like, oh, this is part of the story. If you want to like know cool background information or meet new things, but look, you got to have this other console in order to play the game. And I hate yeah. that so much. Yeah. So it was really nice to be able to find a walkthrough at the time uh, so I could watch other people play it, which was great for me as a Kingdom Hearts fan, uh, because not only could I obviously not play the other games of Kingdom Hearts, but it was really cool to sort of like not be stressed out and just watch and enjoy from a backseat gamer perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I was able to enjoy Aqua a lot more because I wasn't necessarily frustrated about wanting to beat the bad guys. (laughs) (laughs) It's like watching a movie. Exactly. It's a little bit more relaxing. Aqua is a mature, intelligent, and responsible protagonist. She's appealing as a role model for the other characters in the game. Very like older sister or like mom vibes, depending on who she's around. Yeah. Unlike Sora, who's like the main, main character, she isn't super naive, which at times I feel can be a flaw for Sora. 
Yeah. Like, it's nice that he's very optimistic and he, and he has a lot of positive thoughts and he's so gung-ho and some things fly right over his head, but it can be a big... <laughs> A, a big bad thing as well because it bites him in the ass <laughs> yeah. full of times his naivety so it's nice that she's not naive she's also not portrayed in the same way as Kyrie is who's another female keyblade wielder who I do like but I feel that personally Kyrie is treated as a girl who's always powerless and needs help or saving oh. from people yeah. Because she gets put in these situations, which can be frustrating. Uh, even after the first game, Kyrie showed that she could wield a Keyblade and was becoming much stronger in contrast to how she was portrayed at the very beginning, which was a young girl who needed to be saved by her two male friends, even though she was super strong of heart. And that was like the whole reason why she survived was because she had light in her heart, which made her very powerful in like a magical ethereal way she but they make her they talk about her being strong but they don't show it in a lot of other ways yeah like in the third game Kyrie was training with a male character named axel a fan favorite since kingdom heart 2 came out and it shows her like wielding a keyblade and doing magic and being quite strong but while they they showed her as becoming stronger, it never felt like she was treated as a strong person. Oh, yeah. Like the other characters in the game. Again, this is just in my opinion. I really like Kyrie, but it just really sucked seeing another young female character be treated in a way where it's like, She's so sweet and kind and she knows how to fight. But oh no, the bad guy's coming in for some reason. She freezes. Oh. She goes, ah, oh, like scared. Like she's not sure what's going to happen. And then all the men jump in to save her. Because in the end, they're just trying to be good friends. Like that's the whole point of Kingdom Hearts is like familial friendship, power, love, fighting together. But it still just sucks. Yeah. And like if there's not that many female characters then you do like you can have characters like that but you need to have mm -hmm. like other characters too <laughs> that yeah, do, do I, better <laughs> <they> do. <laughs> it's it's just so frustrating because she wants to come along and do things because she's like I can help I can help and I'm like I know you can they've <laughs> talked about all these other things and you seem very well adept but every time they put you into a situation you you're not often being shown how she can help. It's like they're bringing on a damsel in distress purposely just to have a girl there to save. Yeah. Which again, I don't think is their intention when you like look through the whole games. They have like this big premise on like friendship and fighting for the people you care about. And people just care a lot about Kyrie, so they always jump in cuz they want to make sure she's okay cuz she had a shit of a time in the first game. Oh, yeah. She was kidnapped. Oh, no. <laughs> and, like, unconscious. And she was put into, like, this really weird coma because her soul was gone. <laughs> but she had, like, they were trying to take her heart. It was dumb and really sad. <laughs> so, granted, I get why there's protectiveness of her. Yeah. But still just frustrating. Yeah. Give her so a chance. I, <laughs> I know. So I really like that Aqua is kind of like a foil in a way. Yeah. Uh, and she's also actually the character who gifted Kairi the power to use a Keyblade as a child. Oh, cool. Because the only way people in the Kingdom Hearts universe can use a Keyblade is to have a Keyblade master mm. or someone else who's really adept with a Keyblade let you touch their Keyblade. Neat. Yeah, so I really like that. It kind of show in my mind, it's like, oh, this is who Kairi can become, right? Yeah. She can be like Aqua one day. Yeah, a little foreshadowing. Yeah, so I hope it. Kingdom Hearts 3 made it seem like they're going to make more Kingdom Hearts games, so I don't think the series is done, even though I think it should have ended at number three. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I'm so jaded. I was so excited, and then the end of the game came, and I just remember looking to 
to my husband and being like, fuck. I remember. I remember. <laughs> Do you remember me getting pissed that off about time. it? time. <laughs> when you were like, no. <laughs> you were so excited to play it. I remember you just, you like texted me after something and were just so pissed. I was so pissed because I was like, this is the end of the series. This is it. I'm so excited. It's been years. And then they just cliffhang it with another like plot thread. And I'm just like, fuck you so much because I hate that I'm still invested because I was so ready for it to be over. (laughs) Anyways, going back to Aqua. (laughs) While... Aqua is very much mature, intelligent, and responsible. She's not close to perfect at all, which I like. Yeah. Um, Because she had a lot of failures, which I would like to talk about. Nice. She failed at first to save her companion, Tara. And later on, she fell to the influence of the darkness. Showing us that even though she's a guardian of the light and a master key blade wielder, she isn't perfect and she can still succumb to the negative feelings that any person with a heart can, right? Like she succumbed to sadness and anger. She had hate. She was depressed and so on, which I really liked Yeah, that she had that be a part of her character journey. I think perhaps I wouldn't view Aqua in as high esteem if she didn't have that happen to her. Like, it was really shitty. She went through a really, really dark period in her life. But I think it it totally made her come out a lot stronger from it. Yeah, it added depth. Yeah, and it made her, I think, be able to connect to other people that went through the same thing she did. Mm -hmm. Uh, Especially because in Kingdom Hearts 3... After Riku and Sora save her from the darkness, Sora and the others sadly viewed her as weak for a bit of time. Not in a way that I'm sure they meant to be mean or to offend a strong character like herself, but it's true that she needed to recover after her emotional and mental scars from being left alone in this pit of of darkness and emotion on a planet where everything there is like so dark, so sad. All you have is your thoughts. She wasn't as strong as she was. Yeah. So I think it's fair that they were, they viewed her as being weak just because it's like, oh, you're going through shit. You need time to recoup. Yeah. Right. We can't expect this master keyblade wielder to suddenly be at a hundred percent power. Yeah. Um, a little difference between being injured and actually being weak, right? Like, Yeah, yeah. Uh, yet, uh, at one point in Kingdom Hearts 3, Sora says he's going to fight and take care of Venetus, which is so confusing because of the names. Ventus's, like, brother. <laughs> and I say that in air quotes because he's the dark side of Ventus. So they're the same person, but they were split into two different bodies. <laughs> it's fucked. It gets okay. Moving on. Moving on. So Sora says he's gonna deal with it. He's gonna fight him. Um, but she puts Sora down in a very kind manner, stating that she needs to be the one to take care of this fight, as too often Sora and the others have seen her to be weak. So she ends up kicking ass, and you actually, I got to play her for the first time in the game. Because it's been a while since I think she was playable. So it was really nice. I was like, this is the first time I get to play her. It was cool. (laughs) She was neat. I was fighting against Ventus. It was really cool. Sadly, because again, she was in a weak state. She didn't beat Vanitas. Oh. She wasn't at her her prime. Yeah. Because she... Vanitas took advantage of the fact that he noticed she was being very protective of the unconscious body of Ven. And so a few times he was targeting with like fireball D&D magic is how it looks like visually. (laughs) And she put her body physically in front of it to stop it from harming the unconscious uh, Ven. And so... That, you know, didn't help. Yeah. So it really sucked because she fell unconscious in the cinematic. (laughs) 
and like that scene comes in and you're just like Fuck. it was just so, it, it was really anticlimactic for me because i was really excited aqua i know is more badass yeah Re- regardless of the fact that she was recovering i didn't personally like how ultimately sora saved her <laughs> due to him waking up Ventus from his deep, deep sleep. And then he went over and protected her from a fatal blow. And I was like, I get it. You don't want to let someone die. But like, God dang. (laughs) Yeah. And like the other ones, you're more popular, more like standard hero and patriarchal bullshit and uh, unconscientious gender bias and (laughs) again I don't think that's at all what like they were going for because since the series have been out so long they do have just this big theme this whole story which is like found family and friends and you're there to protect people so i get that the characters themselves aren't viewing it as like a i'm the masculine character and i must protect the the weak person they're just like i have a skill set and it's to help people i'm gonna do it but it just comes across sometimes because of how often it happens and how there's a lot of male characters in the game that i was bummed (laughs) Yeah, and well, that, that's what it comes down to, too, when I, like, say, like, the the unintentional gender bias. It's just, yeah. it's just because that's how, that's how it's always been. And so mm-hmm. you don't really question it. And so, like, I understand why these game developers, I'm not exactly sure how many women are in the development phase of this game or anything like that, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't expect you to pull that fucking... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> ...information out of your ass, but... <laughs> but, like, those are questions that it's just like, yeah, like, had there been more diversity in the writing rooms and stuff, it's like, would those stories, would those questions have been asked when somebody was just like, hey, like, we're kind of punking this super awesome character, like, maybe look at that? Yeah. But it's just... It's our, a lot of our problems, especially in, like, video game media. Like, that's a hard... That is a hard media to, to break is. of those just... The standards, because that's what it yeah. is. It's the standard that we have all accepted as being normal. Especially because Kingdom Hearts is a game from Japan, so I also understand they have their own cultural views. Like, there's a yeah. different lens I can't look from either, so I, I can... Oh, yeah. I can kind of sit back from there in a bit, and I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> There's aspects I don't understand. Oh, yeah. Um, Lots of different moving pieces and yeah, variables and, the, and stuff. And how they tell stories is a lot different. Oh, yeah, substantially. Um, uh, but I guess ultimately, while I do think they could have done way more with Aqua as a character, I know that the series' main focus was always Sora. Yeah. And how he can empathize and sympathize with people from across the worlds and he can connect and, and like he has a titular hero's journey in my opinion, but I think Aqua's hero hero's journey would be extremely interesting if they were able to flesh it out more or kind of give her more of, of a focus besides the two games that she was a protagonist in, and then later you had to go back as Sora and Rico to save her, and then she you got to play her once, and then she was <laughs> a side character for many things. Yeah. And well, it sounds like she's pretty cool, like, getting to be the master, going through all those different things. Like, is that, yeah. the, is that the video game that you play as her, as her journey to that? So in the first one you meet, it's when... Her and her companions, Tara and Ventus, uh, Tara and fucking Ventus, Venitas. It's Ventus. Sorry, that's why I get so confused. I hate <laughs> that their names are so similar. Um, yeah, you meet them when they're all getting ready to take like the master Keyblade test. Okay. Um, and so you obviously don't just get to play as her. You focus on like being the other two characters as well. But yeah, in the first game, you're focusing on being her. And then I believe in the second one, she's trying to save Tara and she gets lost in the darkness at the end of it. Okay. Yeah, but like, it still sounds like even if she wasn't necessarily 
given as much as she could have been. She was at mm-hmm. least given enough that you connected with her and yeah. found a character that you enjoyed and that was awesome. <laughs> I Yeah, I kind of just... I guess at the end, I just hope maybe one day they can provide more information on her, you know, like just talk about it because I'm so curious about what happened to her while, like, I know she fell to darkness and she became a dark version of herself because she she literally, she was waiting for Mickey Mouse to save her. That's, oh my God. She was waiting for Mickey Mouse. (laughs) Because she lost her keyblade and she had no way to leave, like, the realm of darkness. She needed a master keyblade to come save her. And at that time, it was Mickey Mouse. And I remember just being like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Fine. Uh, so, so into, like, some quick fun fact stuff. One of them is fucking, like, Riku and Mickey Mouse go to like find her again and she's yeah. like i waited for you mickey and i i knew it was a serious moment because she's talking about him letting her down but i just couldn't stop laughing because you just see mickey mouse uh-huh. Uh-huh. he's like oh no and it's just like what the fuck? Just, i know it was trying to be serious but it's it kind of breaks the mold when you see these Disney characters in the game. Oh, golly, Aqua. <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> I came as soon as I could. It's so funny. It's so funny. Um, something interesting, actually, is when Aqua fell to darkness, she became anti-Aqua, which is a really Ooh. cool design. Her character design looks interesting. And she's a boss in Kingdom Hearts 3. After Aqua is corrupted by the darkness and the influence of Master Xehanort because he fucking went to find someone else when she was in the darkness. She tried to protect uh, the character, but she didn't have her keyblade. So even though she was like physically able to fight, he still like (laughs) (laughs) roasted her in the combat and tossed her into like the sea of darkness and she fell to her sad feelings. Um, but I really like that, like, they saved her from that, and she was able to find everybody, and it was, like, nice. Yeah. Um, like most uh, characters in Kingdom Hearts who wield keyblades, Aqua has more than one form of a keyblade. Like, you can get different types Ooh. that can do different things. I want to say, like, my personal favorites that she yeah. has. There's one called Destiny's Embrace, which is a very pretty, flowery, tropical-looking keyblade. It's actually the same keyblade that Kyrie wields when she starts becoming a keyblade wielder, which oh, I think is cute. really cute. Yeah. There's the Ultima weapon, which is considered the most powerful keyblade, minus like the X keyblade. Which <laughs> I need to call it the X keyblade only because if I keep saying keyblade, even though that's how it's pronounced. I'm worried people will think I'm talking about, like, (laughs) K-E-Y. Just for, like, just for clarity's sake. (laughs) Yeah, I just need to say it's an X-Blade. Yeah. It also Uh, sounds more badass that way. Doesn't it, right? X-Blade. And it requires, like, an incredible amount of effort to obtain in all five games that it shows up in. Like, you have to go through a lot in order to get this different type of Keyblade. Uh, Not just for Aqua, but for other people as well in the game. And I, I, (laughs) what, again, I love Aqua, but I'm never going to get over how odd it is when she's interacting with Mickey Mouse or for that matter, when anyone's now, I look back on it and I'm like, it's so weird seeing such a strange choice at interacting with the Disney characters on like a normal basis where they're not just going to their world right where they meet them in their yeah. world like mickey mouse is a keyblade master and i'm just like i like <laughs> what about mickey mouse is special like i always wanted to wonder that i was like why him in the game like i guess it's because he's like really magical and he like he has like a heart filled with light which is like okay titular disney right like Mickey Mouse, I get it. But sometimes when I just see this badass 
looking character design, female warrior, and then a short, tiny fucking Mickey Mouse. And it's his squeaky high voice. So he's talking. He's like, come on, awkward. <laughs> just like going to do shit in serious <laughs> moments. I'm just like, dear God. <laughs> well, I feel like, because there are ways for you to like get away with doing shit like that. Yeah. Like, for instance, you have Yoda in like Star Wars, which is this tiny little like creature. Yeah. But yeah. it lives in that world already. But like when you take a character from a world like <laughs> Mickey Mouse and then you're trying to put it into another world that has a little bit more grit and a little bit more darkness. Yeah. It's like that's not he doesn't fit there. Like literally he does not fit in at all. I know. <laughs> like I have seen clips and stuff of <laughs> Like the game, and it's just—it's just not. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to buy, and then yeah, you do like you have a very intense moment where somebody's been through a lot of trauma, and she's being rescued by Mickey Mouse, the Mickey Mouse, yeah, yeah. and it's like okay, and she's pissed <laughs> off at him, and she's like, "You failed me," <laughs> and his ears that are very round just slightly droop, just like the, the tiniest little droop, and I'm just like, "Uh, that's a choice." It's it's a choice, <laughs> and I part of me is just like, "Why does she have to rely on Mickey Mouse?" There were so many other people in her game. I just like I'll never forget where she's like. Mickey will get me. And I'm like, fuck! <laughs> no! I get it, you can't leave because you don't have your keyblade. You lost it. I get it. But god dang. <laughs> It'll always... But on a flip side, it's quite funny that Mickey Mouse is one of the reasons that caused her to fall to sad, angry feelings. This, like, yeah. bubbly fucking tidy mouse character. That has brought tons of other people joy in their childhood. Totally, like, <laughs> ruined this girl's ruined emotional this state of being for a decade. <laughs> is sort of ironic. It's entertaining, for sure. It is, it is but also so sad. <laughs> um, <laughs> just the game. I, what, oh, I need to stop talking and thinking about this game. Because it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a ride, Alice, and it's the weirdest <laughs> roller coaster ride I think any game has ever given a lot of people. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I really like it. And yeah. even though I wish there was a lot more for me to talk about Aqua, I still am really happy at like the type of character she is. And how yeah. other characters view her, I think, is why I really appreciate her. Is because for the most part, when you're not able to be her or play in her shoes, how other people view her in the games is really nice. And I yeah. think that's what made me come to like her a lot, is because of how other people in the game viewed her. Yeah, so, so my dear friend Allison... What are you excited for right now? So, Nick and I have decided to start purchasing a collection of manga. Manga? The, a manga. I just... I'm Canadian. Allison, <laughs> I used to say manga until I <laughs> took Japanese classes in high school. Exactly. So I, I don't speak Japanese. I can't understand. <laughs> it's like when I hear... I heard a grade four kid that I went to a class for some in, and he's like, kawaii. And I'm like, you don't, it's just kawaii. You don't say the additional E. Like, you yeah. don't. And he's like, but that's how you're supposed to say it. And I'm like, I'm trying to help you. If, if, you, <laughs> want, if you want to talk to people, I would like to help you try to pronounce it correctly. And this kid just looked at me. He's like, I don't care. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah. For like, for proper names, I will do everything within my power to pronounce that correctly yeah. for shit like this. I'm just like, I'm going to say it the way I said it because I don't say it enough. That, I getcha. I getcha. <laughs> but we have decided to start uh, collecting the Junji Ito books, which is like... Oh! 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no, really? They're so good. <laughs> this is the one that I'm currently reading is his newest one called Love Sickness. And oh, it's so good. Just listen to this on the back. Ryasuki returns to the town where he once lived when rumors begin swirling about girls killing themselves after encountering a bewitchingly handsome young man, harboring his own secret from his time spent in this town. Ryasuki attempts to capture the beautiful boy and close the case. Starting with the strikingly bloody Love Sickness, this volume collects ten stories showcasing horror master Junji Ito in peak form. It's so good. It's like, it's like everything that Miyazaki is, it's the opposite. Oh, it, there's no color. It's all black and white. Oh. It's horrible. <laughs> he, oh, he's so famous. Uh, Junji is how you say the first name. Junji. Junji? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. Welcome. Um, he is like known for like, I, I remember looking, I haven't read any of his shit in a while because you're probably really gonna like the one called um oh my god <laughs> show it to me no <laughs> god damn it like, I know a picture I can show <laughs> ah! <laughs> he, he's known as like the the king of terror yeah not only in Japan but like across the world because he really understands phobias and like existential anxieties and like that kind of shit. He's known as like, like H.P. Lovecraft would love his shit probably. Yeah, and there's there is one that's very I I think it's Gyo, Gyo, Gyo. That's like apparently super like Lovecrafty, and I think that's the one. If he, if he, what, but, um, the, um, <laughs> the one I read only because someone said they're like, oh, it's really good. You will like it. And it started out interesting, but it's till the. T- still to this day and I read it like back in 2009 gives me nightmares I'll still have nightmares of the shit I read and saw from reading the manga called Uzumaki oh yeah we're gonna get that one too At, do, do I commend you Allison because again I fuck I can't I can't I can't with him he's so talented and I respect him but I just can't with his work because after reading it it sucked because I couldn't put it down yeah which is what so I hate. interesting I was terrified fucking terrified nightmares for months trying to read this manga but I couldn't put it down because I was thinking about it <laughs> I was like how's it gonna end and then it ended and I was like why did I do this to myself the the next one I'm gonna get is gonna be Tomi. And it's about, like, basically a succubus who's, like, this apparently, like, super gorgeous woman. So I'll probably talk about that (laughs) one day. But the only copies that they had in the store of Tomi was, um, they were all kind of older and a little bit more beat up. And so we're snobs and... (laughs) Uh, want want them to be fresh and clean with no dinged corners uh, (laughs) but yeah like just the way that he depicts terror and like just how like the the world is affecting a person like the main character in this Ryosuke like as he's searching for this beautiful boy and trying to like stop all these girls from killing themselves he starts to like hollow out almost like he's being like eaten away from the inside by his like obsessions and it's just uh, (laughs) it's so good (laughs) and like the pages are so dark but somehow so detailed and it's just like uh, I've been looking at his stuff for so long in the comic book shop and it's just, yeah, <laughs> I'm finally, like, breaking down. And then, because uh, Nick had been also thinking about buying them for a while. And then when I was like, oh, you know, I might, like, buy that one. He's like, done, we're buying all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm happy you're the type of person, Allison, that enjoys this shit. I'm literally like, reading truly, this before bed. <laughs> I could never. I could 
could never. <laughs> My God. I read a chapter before bed. <laughs> puts me right to sleep. <laughs> you bad woman. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm very happy for you because I know you'll enjoy that shit. If I would have known, I would have recommended Uzumaki <laughs> years ago. But it's just like, I hate remembering that manga because I get nightmares. Yeah, and like, I just, I've been looking at them honestly for years, but it was just like, a new one came out and I was like, you know what? It's new, like, it's relatively <laughs> thin compared uh-huh. to the other ones. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. And so I was like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's start this new obsession for Alice. This is going to make... So, dear listeners, before we end this, I need to tell you how Allison is one of my dungeon masters. Yes. And she is DMing a game called Hecna. And it's all about, like, carnival horror and, like, creepy shit. And, like, I told Allison I would love to play. I'm not going to be very good in many settings because I'll just break down and cry. Knowing Allison's reading this now is guaranteeing me <laughs> she's going to have more fucking terrifying shit to describe to me yep. <laughs> through my ear holes that I'm going to picture vividly <laughs> and then cry about later. <laughs> Happy for literally everybody else but me <laughs> in that situation. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Allison, but I'm also so scared. Yeah, genuinely so happy I finally decided to read these. Oh. Uh, <laughs> would you like to end us off? I will. <laughs> You can find us wherever podcasts can be found. Please make sure to rate, review, and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram at WenchBenchPod. And if you want to reach out, you can send us an email at WenchBenchPod at gmail.com. All of the art for The Wench Bench was designed by the wonderful Tessa Joyce Reekin. You can find her on Twitter and Instagram at Wherevile. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh boy. You can follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. 